Hello. Today we're going to be taking a look at a few items that contain two of my favorite qualities, being shiny and going boom. In late 2018, the army released a PPON for NGSW. For anyone below the rank of captain, or not a 36 series, that's a prototype project opportunity notice for the next generation squad weapons. Or in basic English, it's a 48 page notice with 20 plus attachments to inform contractors of an opportunity to submit prototypes for the next generation squad weapon program. And on my end, that's enough paperwork to make me say, nevermore. These forms outline what the government wants, how to submit entries, the basic plan schedule, and so much more. In order to make sure these forms got to the right people, they posted it on their digital corkboard much like your mother does with her dinner plans, or they do with the DFAC menu. All of these informative documents have three things in common. They all raise questions, they always change, and no one gets what they want. Before we get to the fun stuff, let me catch you up to speed with a quick project timeline. On the 25th and 26th of July, 2017, the first industry day was held at Fort Benning, Georgia with the primary purpose to provide industry with the information on the program and to gain insight into the vendors' weapons technologies and production. Representatives from over 20 companies and members from other services were in attendance. On the 12th and 13th of December 2017, the second industry day was held at Picatinny Arsenal, New Jersey. The purpose of this was to update on the program's plans provide more details on the requirements and to answer questions from the industry. Representatives from over 25 companies attended this one. On the 25th of June 2018, the project manager for Soldier Weapons awarded six fixed amount OTAs and by OTAs we mean other transaction agreements. On the 4th of October 2018, a draft PPON was released the third industry day was held on the 14th and 16th of November 2018 at Picatinny Arsenal primarily to discuss the PPON. On August 29, 2019, General Dynamics OTS INC, AAI Corporation Textron Systems, and CXLR INC were awarded contracts for the next generation squad weapon rifle and automatic rifle. And that's about where we are today. Luckily for everyone involved, Section 2.2 of the PPON lists everything the Army were looking for in these weapons. That will make it a lot easier to see how the proposed prototypes compare to the primary products. As I mentioned before, the NGSW project is looking to attain both a standard and squad automatic rifle. But since the Army thinks I have enough work both rifles require most of the same standards. 1. Both rifles must allow for ambidextrous operation and controls. 2. They must include a flash hinder, removable suppressor with or without a flash hinder installed, and a tool for suppressor removal after firing or for maintenance. 3. They must include a tactical carrying sling with quick release attachments. 4. They have to include select positions for safe, semi-automatic firing and automatic firing modes. 5. Now this is an interesting one. They must be resistant to corrosion, abrasion, impact, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear defense, contaminants, decontaminants, battlefield chemicals, electromagnetic pulses, and cyber attacks. That's quite a bit of protection. 6. They will possess reduced visual detection via a neutral, non-reflective, non-black color, not lighter than Coyote 481, and not darker than Coyote 499. Quite a fashionable choice if I do say so myself. 7. They must function in all environments and weather conditions, including ambient, cold, hot, marine, high humidity, rain, and desert conditions. You think that one will be a given, but military. 8. They must be compatible with combat clothing, including body armor and modular lightweight load carrying equipment, seaburn defense, wet weather, and cold weather gear. 
9. Manufacturers must provide interchangeable magazines between both weapons if the squad AR utilizes a magazine. And last but certainly not least, 10. Both rifles must include, at minimum, a 12 o'clock position rail that is compliant to the Picatinny Smart Rail Interface System. The weapon configurations must include a non-battery and a battery configuration. By non-battery, they mean just battery removed. And before anyone says anything, yes, they're going to use 6.8 millimeter ammunition. These 10-ish commandments are the only criteria explicitly expressed in the contract. So everything else is by company discretion, and for the most part, they're keeping their lips sealed. Okay, that was all the relevant exposition, so it's time for the main event. In one corner, we have the Golden Boy and John Favor. I mean, Sig Sauer. Sig is using the age-old strategy, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Soldiers have trained on the weapon systems currently in use for decades, and they're designed to be easy to maintain and repair. So rather than a complete overhaul, SIG has updated them to meet the before mentioned standards, made the weapons lighter, reduced the recoil, put a side charging handle on the carbine, and made the saw loadable without opening the top, and various other upgrades. This principle also holds true with their new rounds as well. They're using a hybrid brass round that can be made by standard manufacturers with minimal changes to equipment while making the individual rounds lighter and more puncture resistant because no one likes moving ammo crates around for hours or having the one round that over penetrates or misfires. Next in the ring is Textron Systems. They've been a lot less forthcoming with their weapon data, almost like this is a confidential weapon system that contains trade secrets. Despite the appropriate withholding of information, I was able to find that their rifles are designed to use polymer wrap, caseless telescopic ammunition, which is supposed to be lighter and faster than current rounds. This is the closest idea we have to the inner workings of their candidate. If this diagram is even remotely accurate, it appears they're trading simplicity and field serviceability for accuracy and range. This diagram could be wrong, but I don't intend to dig deeper because Textron Systems has the right to exercise discretion when working with such sensitive material. And finally, the system that has more dead ends and confusion than the London Street Map, the General Dynamics Entry, which are made by Beretta with a bullpup design that fire true velocity rounds with a polymer casing. Not to mention, the squad automatic weapon is currently slated to be magazine fed only. Let's unpack that. It's understandable that GD outsourced their process. Currently, they make everything from computer software to ground vehicles to rockets. Now 9 out of 10, they went with the bullpup design to increase barrel length without increasing weapon size so they could stay light but still have increased speed and accuracy. The polymer casings for the rounds are almost definitely to cut down on weight. As for the magazine fed saw, you got me with that one. Well, that's all I have on next generation squad weapons for today. And this video has dragged on longer than my usual content. So if you're still awake and you'd like to see this topic covered in more detail by people way more skilled than me, feel free to click one of the links to my left. All of my sources are down in the description below. And thanks for watching.